everyone and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy and Storm Tracing. First off, let me start with apologizing to you guys for being away for a while. Unfortunately, I've just had a lot going on in my life here lately and uh, I've had to put this project kind of in the back seat. But now things are finally kind of starting to settle down and I'm really looking forward to getting back to doing what I love. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight and if you haven't yet, please take time to subscribe down below if you like what you're seeing and also be sure to leave a like on the video if you like it as well. We've got some very clear skies tonight. There's not a cloud around. It's not too humid out. So I think tonight I have the perfect opportunity to go back to Andromeda. Now I've shot Andromeda before using the Skywatcher Star Adventure and the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens with some pretty good results, but tonight I'm expecting something significantly better. And I'm really excited to finally, finally be able to use this setup and also have another new toy to play with as well. I just recently purchased the Orion Sky Glow Imaging Filter. And I've noticed in a lot of my pictures I have a lot of gradients and stuff like that, which, you know, I could probably edit it out, but I'm still, you know, in the learning curve of processing my images. So I thought maybe a Sky Glow filter will help out a lot. I'm pretty excited to see what kind of results I can get with that. But yeah, same setup as I've been trying to use now for about the past three months. The Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro with the William Optics Z61 telescope, the Flat 61 adjustable field flattener, the Orion Sky Glow imaging filter, and the Canon T3i. Now I've already got everything balanced out and set up here, and really I've just got to wait on it to get dark. And as soon as it gets dark, Andromeda will begin to rise over these trees right here, and then I'll begin the polar alignment process. I'm just, I'm really excited to finally get back into this and hopefully I haven't forgot how to do this. We'll see. Now you can see Jupiter there. It's finally starting to pop out here behind the trees. Just a little bit longer though. All right, I can finally make out players here to the north. I've kind of got everything good and lined up here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this polar alignment process started. As you can see here in the polar scope align app, it's setting it just about roughly on 10 o'clock here. And remember if you're still having trouble polar aligning, please check out this video I'll link up above and I'll show you exactly how I do it myself. So far it's worked out pretty well for me. Hopefully it's not, it's no different. Fingers crossed this goes well. So let's go ahead and get started. leave that right there and go ahead and start on the star alignment process. Hopefully Andromeda is just about to begin poking over the tops of these trees right here. All right now I finally kind of got things going here. You can see I've actually got Vega right here that I'm about to start my focusing on and then we'll just kind of go from there. Hop from one star alignment kind of see how that goes and do a two star and just go from there. Okay, so finally, I've had some luck. <laughs> My star alignments went pretty terribly there at the start. I don't know really what quite was off. I know the first star that I uh, did my first star alignment on was Vega. Whenever it slewed to it, I noticed that the scope was pointing quite a few degrees north of Vega. So I wasn't too sure what was going on there. I tried it another time, same thing happened. So I just took a deep breath, went inside, because remember, <laughs> This hobby is all about patience. Came back out, uh, reset everything, uh, re polar lines, all that good stuff. And sure enough, uh, it slewed right to Vega. So I went ahead and reset one more time. Then I went back and did my full three star alignment and everything this time went really well. So I went ahead and uh, slewed towards Andromeda and uh, did a test shot just to make sure M31's framed up properly. And sure enough, it is. So finally, fingers crossed that nothing here dies uh, the, the way not going so far. I wouldn't be surprised if my battery died or something like that. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm taking a three minute sub right now and I'm about to see what that looks like. Alrighty, as you seen there, that was my first uh, three minute sub and 
whenever I went back and looked at it a little bit closer, all the stars looked really good and everything was nice and round. Uh, so I'm really happy so far with how, it, how it's performing. So I'm going to go ahead and start a set of 30 pictures, giving me an hour and a half of data, which is by far more, more time than I've had on any target with the setup so far. I may even stretch it out to 40 pictures or so, just to gather a little bit more data and just kind of see what happens. And then of course, after the set's done, I'm going to go in and I'll do my light, uh, dark frames and uh, flat frames and all that good stuff. So, I guess I'm going to go in now and set and just kind of see what happens here. Again, fingers crossed, but here we go. Let's go ahead and do this. Andromeda M31. Hopefully, let's see what happens. Alrighty, so the last of my light frames is finally about to tick off right here. Uh, unfortunately, my battery did die uh, after about 20 frames been shot, but thankfully I had some backup, so I came out here and threw in another battery and went ahead and took the last 10 frames. And just kind of going through them, everything looks like it's turned out really good. I'm really excited to see what this new Orion Sky Glow filter has also done for the pictures. So like I said before, in a lot of my previous images, there's been like a really big gradient. And I'm sure that's caused by light pollution because again, I am kind of here just outside of the town. So I'm excited to see what I get with this. But uh, as soon as this one's done here, I'm going to start on my dark frames. Alrighty. All of my calibration frames are finally done. You can see here, this is actually my flat frame shirt that I call it. I'm actually trying one test shot on another target that I've been wanting to shoot for a very long time now as well. But that's going to be it for the night. I'm about to start putting everything up and then I'm immediately going to bed because I've had a very long day and I've moved a lot of stuff today. I'd love to get twice the amount of data that I got on M31 but I will on another night here soon because I'm not done with this target yet. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pack it up for the night guys and I'll see you in the morning. Here we are the next day now, and I finally got my image processed. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it considering that's the first time I've used this new setup of mine. And unfortunately, I was only able to use either 19 or 20 of those images out of the 30 that I took, because I think what happened whenever my battery died and I went and put the other one in, I must have just barely bumped, the, bumped my setup just enough to kind of knock, knock it out of alignment. So the last 10 or so of those images, they they just had some very minor star trailing to them, which is unfortunate, but that's part of it. As for my editing process this time, I try to go just a little bit softer because I'm really bad to overcook my images. And the whole uh, post-processing thing, it's still something I'm, I'm still learning. There's a huge learning curve to this stuff. But overall, I'm still really happy with how Andromeda turned out. It's definitely a step up from the last picture that I took of it. So again, guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in with me today. And again, if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe down below and like the video because every little bit just makes me want to push that much harder to keep this channel going. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy.